Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming an exciting video. This is a recap from a video I filmed last year and I've seen quite a few people do this and this is me going over some of the brands I tried or plan to try in 2018 and I just kind of want to give you guys a recap of if I tried the brand, if I didn't try the brand, like what the scoop is, and then hopefully I will do the same thing in 2019. So film a similar video and then tell you guys my thoughts in 2020, which is crazy to think about. But really quick, I did watch this video today and just kind of write down a list of all the brands I had intended to try. And I realized I had made a fundamental mistake or two in my first video that I did in 2018. One of the things was I definitely made the video kind of later in the year. I think my video went up in like March or April, which I feel like January is a more appropriate time for a video like this. And the other thing, which is my number one big mistake, is that I had way too many brands on the list. And I don't know what it was. In 2018, I don't know if other creators you guys watched had the same mentality, but I was on such a like buy, buy, buy everything kick. And I know there's so many people going on no buys and low buys, and I haven't necessarily like said that and put it out into the world that I'm on a low buy or no buy, mostly because every time I say it out loud, I feel like I fail at it. So I've been just kind of trying to be more thoughtful about my makeup purchases. It is like the first week of January and I haven't bought anything yet this week which is pretty epic for me. I'm also like mostly broke from Christmas time and we have a trip coming up in the third week of January. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. We have a trip coming up for work slash fun and so I'll be in California and I'll be in Las Vegas around that time so if you guys are subscribers or friends that maybe want to try and meet up definitely let me know or DM me on Instagram so we can see if we can meet up because that will be really cool and then me and my husband are also going to France in February so we've got a lot of travel expenses and I'm already feel feeling like really broke so I feel like that coupled with the fact that a lot of the new makeup releases are kind of like pooey are keeping me accountable but yeah I picked way too many brands for 2018 and something I've definitely seen people say and I'm sure I heard for sure I heard Angelica mention this and also Hot Mess Ness. By the way, I am so behind on talking to you guys about Hot Mess Ness. She is so so funny. I want to go ahead and give her a huge shout out because she is just one of my Instagram buddies and we are YouTube buddies too but we talk on Instagram and I love her so much so if you guys like a very kind of, I don't want to say she, she's sarcastic, but she does have a really like awesome sense of humor. So if you want to watch a channel like that, I will try and remember to link her down below. Otherwise, I'm sure you guys already probably know who I'm talking about. And she loves indie and she buys a lot of makeup too. Um, so anyway, where was I going? Yeah, they both mentioned, Angelica and Hot Mess Ness, Vanessa, mentioned that you know, a lot of people were doing like try nine brands in 2019 um, and that would mean that you were trying a brand almost once a month and I was like, oh my gosh. And then I watched my video from 2018 and I'm like, Karen, you pick like 20 something brands to try, like what the actual fuck? So this is like the longest intro in the history of the world, but let me just start with the brands I had mentioned. So the first brand I had mentioned is Stellar Cosmetics and I had mentioned in my original video, which I will also put down in the description box, I had seen the brand in Vegas and I wasn't really attracted to anything and I was hoping that she would come up with something within the course of 2018, but nothing actually came out that caught my attention. So I actually never ended up trying the brand. So what I think I might do is just move it on to 2019 <laughs> and see if there's something that comes out. So I'll keep my eyes on it, but it's not something like I'm gonna die if I don't try any of these brands, you know, but I didn't try it in 2018 and uh, maybe I'll try it in 2019, we'll see. The next brand was Strobe Cosmetics and they came out with two palettes this past year. So they came out with the Creepy Cute palette and they also came out with the Divinity palette. So 
I can't remember if I reviewed the Creepy Cute palette for you guys, but I actually really liked how it swatched on me, but I was having a hard time getting the same level of vibrancy as some YouTubers with lighter skin tones than me, so I know a lot of the Caucasian beauty gurus that I watch really enjoy the Strobe Cosmetics palette. Personally, for me, I don't know if it's just me, and I like, I don't usually like put down a white base when I'm using lighter colors and things like that, so on me, it doesn't look as pastel, and I don't really know a lot of deeper tone beauty gurus that have maybe talked about the palette, and I could do my research, but I'm, I'm too lazy, let's be real. Um, the Divinity palette, I think, was a beautiful fall palette. Again, I think it's definitely going to be more flattering on lighter skin tones, but I can't really fully speak to it either, because I've only really use that palette twice on my eyes and so definitely part of my goal for the at least the first half of 2019 is to get through some of the palettes that I have purchased from 2018 that I just have not had the time to really like dive into and I feel like I deserve to try all this makeup and try it well before I move on to buying more makeup. So hopefully I can keep up to that criteria that I've set for myself but Strobe Cosmetics, I'm kind of half and half. I was disappointed in the Creepy Cute palette, um, but I don't have my thoughts fully formulated on the Divinity palette, so that's the update on that. Beauty Bakery was next on my list, and I had purchased their um, ice cream palette because I saw Makeup Struggles talk about it, and they were selling Beauty Bakery on Forever 21's website. I think now you can buy Beauty Bakery on Riley Rose, which is a sister company or a sister store to Forever 21. It's just like the makeup store. Um, so I think Beauty Bakery is sold on Riley Rose. And then I also bought their Graham Cracker palette, which was also beautiful. What I ended up doing though and feeling was I didn't really love the Graham Cracker palette and then I never tried the ice cream palette so it's actually in my pile of things. I think I'm going to do like a giveaway with it at some point so stay tuned to that. And I just really have not been very attracted to anything from Beauty Bakery since I've heard a lot of their like baking powders are nice. They have some lipsticks that claim to be like super long wearing and they are now sold at Ulta so I don't know if it's a brand I'd go back to necessarily but as far as 2018 goes I did try a little bit of it and I wasn't very excited about it so I'm just gonna leave that in 2018 I don't think that's one I'll carry over to 2019 to keep you know trying new things from them if something like revolutionary comes out for sure but like even that new palette they have I think they're selling a palette on Ulta I'll try and put pictures up of what I'm talking about because I was way too lazy to actually like go into my collection and pull all the products because like I said my list was 21 brands like it's a little bit over the top yeah the one they're selling right now at Ulta it looks fun but again I have so many palettes to try out already so I stayed away from that as well. Now the next brand is Give Me Glow Cosmetics. I had such a good year with Give Me Glow Cosmetics. I tried three palettes from them. I just bought some of their single shadows as well because they had a really good sale during Black Friday and I have really just been enjoying them. They're newer, like I feel like their formula has even changed from the Summer Vibes palette because the palette I got most recently, which was the Christmas Morning palette, has such an amazing formula. Very pigmented. I also got a chance to try one of their mini lip bundles and their lip colors are wonderful. I get so many compliments when I wear the shade uh, Dirty Pumpkin, I think, from them. So I am really excited for 2019 because I they're not a brand that's like on my list to try but they're definitely a brand I will continue to purchase from they've already announced two palettes I will throw up pictures so you guys can see I believe one's called Juicy Olive and one's called Vintage Rose totally up my alley so I'm really excited to see what comes from Give Me Glow in 2019 okay so the next brand on my list is Divina Cosmetics and I had mentioned in my video that Angelica had talked about Divina and they had a collection called is it Over the Rainbow or something which were these smoky shades but they had like greens and purples and it's just very unique. I just remember like seeing a swatch on Angelica's Instagram and I was like obsessed with trying it so I did buy that bundle and I loved it and then I also bought their Spartacus bundle which looked so beautiful and you guys 
I haven't tried any of those matte shadows. So I have the, I have the bundle, I haven't tried them. So again, another reason why I feel good about not buying makeup in 2019 right away is because I have so many things to test out still. And so again, I, ha I, I don't have fully formulated thoughts on Davina because I haven't fully put work into trying their palettes. They also came out with so many beautiful collections this year. I tried to stay away because like I said I hadn't even used the ones I bought from them enough really. Um, there is one set they just came out with a bunch of beautiful mattes. There are some green like dirty green shades in that bundle that I totally have my eye on but I'm like Karen no because again you need to use what you have so I'm kind of like halfway on Divina. It is it seems like from the what, what I've tried it's a good brand but I can't tell you like run out and buy it because I have not used enough product from them yet to do that. Same way with Luxie. Luxie Beauty is another brand I found through Angelica and also Hot Mess Ness has a bunch of their shadows. I have picked up three collections from them and I'm really eyeing their very last collection of 2018 which was like the Temptations collection. It was like these beautiful jewel toned shades but I'm like Karen no again you haven't tested what you have so I am not buying any more until I test what I have. The only thing I did notice with Luxie is some of the shadows I think they I don't know if they had too much glitter in them but a lot like two or three of my shadows like completely shattered and all they were doing was just chilling in my Ikea drawers so I don't know if like some of their formula is not the greatest so I would caution you especially if you don't have a ton of extra cash to be throwing at eyeshadow maybe proceed with caution because I remember their summer collection had like a white duochrome shade and the last time I checked up on it it literally had like shattered in the Z palette and I was like uh like I can't believe I you know paid money for that and it was completely broken. It didn't come broken, it's just from like sitting in my drawer, so I'm thinking it's like a formula thing. Not 100% sure, but I just wanted to mention it in case you guys were thinking of trying the brand. Next brand is Suva Beauty. So I went in hard to Suva Beauty and I bought a bunch of their palettes. I bought some of their Hydra liners and then also their newest, one of their newer palettes called Block Party. I really enjoy the owner, the founder of Suva. She is so sweet on Instagram and I love following her. Something about Suva's formula does not agree with me. It's not my favorite. It's very, very pigmented and it's beautiful, but it's not my favorite eyeshadow formula. I don't know if you guys have stuff like that where it just, it's nothing wrong with it, but personal preference, I'm like, eh. So I noticed myself avoiding using my Suva palettes. So I decluttered like my Cupcakes and Monsters. I had like a neutral palette from them that I got rid of and those were pretty pricey. So then I bought the Block Party palette because I wanted to support, which that's a whole nother YouTube video to make on like support buying things. Um, but I bought it and I honestly recently put it on my Poshmark because I knew it was a palette that I had bought to try to like support and I just wasn't enjoying it. And I was like, you know what? This needs to go to somebody that's gonna enjoy it. So I actually sold it on Poshmark and the same was with their Saffron palette, which was a newer palette they came out with. It looks so beautiful, but I was like, Karen, you don't need more red shades. You don't need more bronze shades. Don't buy this palette. You don't need to do it. So I'm very proud of myself that I resisted all of their New Year sales, their Black, Black Friday sales. I've been so good and I just don't need it. I don't need any more makeup. So Suva is one of those brands I was so hyped about and person of color owned, but it's not my makeup taste. It doesn't work the way, like, it doesn't work like an eyeshadow way I enjoy, and that's okay. They also came out with liquid lipsticks in 2018, so if you guys have been wondering if you should try it, I would definitely say yes. It's just it didn't work for me. It wasn't my favorite formula. That's all. So the next brand is Storybook Cosmetics. This is another one that I am so guilty of. I own the Burn Book palette, which is their like Mean Girls palette, and I did a swatch party and I never went back to that palette. So again, it is on my top shelf 
of my makeup cart waiting for me to film with it. So I'd like to do at least like a get ready with me or some sort of like me playing with the palette, test out the pigmentation and stuff like that. I did really think it was a very pigmented formula when I did the swatch party, so I'm excited to try it out. But then this is another brand I think that'll get carried over to my 2019 list. Okay, the next brand is Glamlight, and I did pick up the Masterpiece palette from them. Glamlight has really shot up in popularity, I think, especially towards the end of 2018. I think they started doing more affiliate codes and things like that, and then they came out with the Pizza palette, which everyone was losing their mind about. They also have some more colorful palettes. The first palette, which was the Masterpiece, was kind of a very toned down neutral palette, which there's nothing wrong with. Definitely my makeup style as well. Um, but yeah, it was just one of those palettes I think I played with and I was like, eh, it's nice, but I never went back to it. And I had some time off from work during the holiday season, so that also ended up going in my declutter pile and I was able to pass it on to somebody I'm sure who is enjoying it more than me. So Glamlight is off my list. It's not something I'm going to move over to 2019. I tried one palette from them. I don't think there's anything wrong with the quality, but I'm not going to pick up anything from them anytime soon unless there's something new that they come out with. Next thing on my list is nude sticks. Now I actually bought a set of nude sticks and I quickly ended up returning it because I just don't think nude sticks is my makeup vibe. I'm really not a cream makeup person and I just didn't want to waste my money so I felt like kind of pressure on myself to try the brand but I was like Karen like don't do this to yourself and don't waste the makeup and just try it and return it like you know what I mean? So. I don't know, it just didn't feel right, and so I'm glad I didn't try anything from them. I know a lot of people love nude sticks, I just don't think it's me, so I am taking that off the list as well, it won't be going into 2019. The next brand is Pinky Rose, and I recently did a swatch party video with their new palettes. They came out with like a trilogy collection. I did the swatch party video, I showed you guys the Bright Lights palette from them, and then I have a Rose palette from them, also both were untouched until I swatched them at during that video. So I actually didn't try Pinky Rose in 2018 at all. So that will be making its way into my 2019 list to try out. I already have the palettes. It's just that all the videos will get done hopefully in 2019. So something for you guys to look forward to. Next brand is Pixie Beauty and from Pixie I tried their Glow Tonic which everyone talks about. I tried one of their eyeshadow palettes and then I don't know if you can see them back there but I have their Fairy Lights. The Fairy Lights was my favorite thing. I don't really like Pixie's eyeshadow formula. The Glow Tonic is nice but it's definitely not something like I'm dying to buy. I've seen those like 500 ml containers that you can sometimes get limited edition and I know people swear by that formula. It's just not something I really need right now. I already have a toner I like, so I'm not like dying to buy it. But I feel like the fairy lights are super fun. I hope they do more shades. I don't know why they haven't done more shades yet. Currently, I think they have five shades and it's all like really nice, easy to use neutrals. My friend Leticia gets PR from Pixie and she always uses the fairy lights as well and they look fabulous on her. So. If I could recommend one product for you guys to try from Pixie Beauty, it would be the Fairy Lights. Okay, here is another brand that I actually never ended up trying in 2018. It's number seven, and I'm actually go not going to be taking that into 2019. It's just not something I'm very interested in. I feel like I don't know where my head was when I was making this list, but I think I thought that I should make it as long as I can and put as many brands in it to like be more knowledgeable on different brands which is not the way to go. So number seven is getting kicked off that list. Love Lux Beauty was another indie brand that I heard more and more buzz about in 2018 and I actually did buy one of their highlighting palettes. Again, once I got the palette, it was just so intimidating. It was a very colorful highlighter. I maybe thought I would use it on my eyes, but the formula was so unstable. I actually dropped it onto my carpet and it pretty much like shattered, like all the shades pretty much shattered, so I actually ended up decluttering it to my best friend's nieces who are like younger girls and I think they would have way more fun with that palette. It's just really not my makeup vibes and so yeah, I won't be trying Love Lux Beauty anytime soon either. <laughs> number, I don't even know what number we're on. Anyway, the next brand is Sydney Grace. Now Sydney Grace is a brand I'm so happy I tried. They have some beautiful eyeshadows. I love 
how many shades they have. There's so much variety. I think they are like what Makeup Geek couldn't be in 2018. Um, one of the owners that runs their social media, Heather, she's so nice. Sydney Grace actually follows me on Instagram, which I think is pretty cool because I actually respect the company. I love what they stand for. I love their shade selection. They did this really cool thing this year where they did a sh like a collection and then they did some shades geared to dark skin tones, some shades geared to light skin tones, or you could purchase the whole bundle, which I thought was an excellent idea from an indie brand. They also duped the Tarte Icy Betch palette, which was nice, and they're just always doing really cool, innovative things. And I actually, one of my last purchases, or my last makeup purchase for 2018, was actually their Autumn Rain palette, so I'm so excited to get that palette and review it for you guys. I'm so behind on reviewing Sydney Grace. I have so many of her shadows, and again, they don't get enough love from me, so I'm very, very excited to have some time in 2019 to give more love to some of those things I picked up in 2018. The next one is Cleonade Cosmetics. So I picked up quite a bit from Cleonade as well. I got both their palettes, the Paleo and the Archeo. I picked up a set of singles that they have. I think it was like Witchcraft and Wizardry. And then very recently I picked up their North 665, I don't know, collection and also their Harvest Moon bundle. So I have a lot of eyeshadow from Cleonade. Again, you guys have probably never heard me talk about them on my channel because I bought too much makeup in 2018. That is a fact. And so I think the only time I mentioned Cleonade is when I did my collab with Nadia here on YouTube. We did like two looks with the same palette on two different skin tones and I used the Arkeo palette for the first time. So it's pretty obnoxious that I just have accumulated so much and given it so little attention. So once I get the new bundles, you guys best believe I will be doing dedicated videos showing you guys those products. So very excited for that. And so I, I would say Cleanot is going to roll into 2019 a little bit. Sugar Pill was also so, so hyped for me in 2018. I did end up picking up one of their pro palettes and you guys, I bought it and I maybe used it for a week and you guys probably never saw it mentioned on my channel again. I think I did a swatch party video. I was honestly really underwhelmed by Sugar Pill. I was expecting some kind of magical, mystical situation to come by because I've heard so many people talk about Sugar Pill and I honestly think they're just okay. I don't think the price is justified. The pans are huge. I don't know how I'm going to get through them. I do want to do, again, a dedicated video, maybe doing like a look for you guys, and hopefully a review as well. I know they are coming out with new shades sometime this year, so that'll be interesting. And I've been debating because they are doing like a bright green, which was a shade I wanted that they used to have but discontinued. And they're also doing a pink, which I wanted but didn't have available when I was making my pro palette. But yeah, I just, I don't like the formula, so I can't see myself buying anything else from them. So I'm not going to carry Sugar Pill into 2019, but you guys will see my Sugar Pill Pro Palette in 2019 on my channel, hopefully, if I get my shit together. The next brand is Touch of Glam. I did pick up a little set from Touch of Glam as well, some really beautiful metallic shades. They have not touched my eyeballs yet, so that one is going to need to go into 2019 as well. The next brand was Misha Lu, and I did pick up one palette from them. I, I don't know if they do anything else, honestly, and I feel like I, I don't even know really why I included them in my brands I wanted to try video. The one palette I do have, the Witchcraft palette, is gorgeous. It's probably one of the first green palettes that came to the market, and now we have like a thousand green palettes on the market. So it's a nice one. Again, it is UK-based brand. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you go out of your way to get it, especially with all the new green palettes that we have. But it is available for you guys to try if you are interested in. And then the next brand is Certify, and I also have Blush Tribe on the list, so I'm kind of going to talk about those two together. I did pick up a bunch of stuff from Blush Tribe and Certify 
in 2018. I don't think I'll be buying anything else from either brand in 2019 because I want to enjoy the things I have. Both brands are kind of coming out with stuff kind of quick and I do believe that they are owned. Both brands are owned by sisters so I see a lot of similarities in the color schemes from Blush Drive to Certify and also it was so funny because I was watching uh, Makeup Struggles talk about Blush Tribe in her worst makeup of 2018 video and she's like Blush Tribe is like the small YouTuber Morphe and I was like I literally like bust out laughing as soon as she said that and I was like I couldn't agree with her more I feel like they are doing a lot of product and I feel like I don't think they're trying to take advantage of small youtubers but I feel like they've kind of figured out that hey if I appeal to the small youtuber community we might not be the masses where we're talking to like millions of people but we're also like very very interested in makeup so I think even though we're not in the masses like millions and millions of subscribers I think some of the following that smaller YouTube channels have are more loyal and I feel like the owner of Blush Tribe knows this and so when I see all the YouTube collabs and when she's naming shades after YouTubers I love I kind of feel like it's getting a little gimmicky and I want to support my friends so obviously I purchased the palettes but that's gonna come to a halt in 2019 for me because they are overseas, shipping isn't really that cheap, the palettes are pretty affordable but once you factor in shipping you are kind of paying the price of a eyeshadow palette that you could buy in the States. So I don't know, I just feel like the most mm, part that like irks me about them is the fact that they are desperately trying to capture the smaller influencer market. So. I don't know. You guys tell me how you feel about that. I know it's probably a very unpopular opinion and I feel kind of like an asshole saying it out loud but I feel like more people think it than they say and so I just wanted to tell you guys like hey be careful. Don't get caught in the trap of like support 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 and yeah they've already announced like two or three palettes that are coming out this year so I'm just gonna stay away from all of it. The next brand I put on my list is Charlotte Tilbury and I got so lucky because in 2018 Charlotte Tilbury started being sold on Sephora.com. I actually placed an order actually on the Charlotte Tilbury website too and I bought I believe her foundation and then I bought the Pillow Talk, blush, lippy, um, lip liner, eyeshadow palette like I bought a bunch of stuff from Charlotte Tilbury this year I have tested some of it I do want to do a dedicated video because I did a video swatching the pillow talk collection and you guys it was like seeing dust being applied on my skin um, I still haven't dove into that eyeshadow palette yet and actually put it on my eyes but that video is coming Charlotte Tilbury is very luxurious and she is a professional makeup artist so I do have mad respect for the brand um, I don't really have enough opinions formed on the products I own from her to tell you guys like yes or no. So that's definitely a brand you're going to see in 2019 as well. And then the last brand, and I didn't try anything from this one, and again this is like one of those I think I put on the list so I had a long list, you know, is Winky Lux. And they are kind of like a basic bitch brand to be honest like very muted shades just not my makeup vibes I don't need anything that they're selling right now so that won't be going into 2019 I don't want to try the brand I don't care I'm sure you guys really like them I'm sure they're a great brand but they don't really need to be in my makeup collection so that is everything I'm sure this video is a million jillion years long I hope you enjoyed watching it and I will see you guys in my next video soon Bye!